Yes, guys. So as I'm speaking right now, Jed Spence is seemingly on his way to Ellen Road to undergo a medical for Leeds United. Will be a loan deal with no obligation and no option to buy, as we believe. Straight up loan. Guys, there's, there's levels to this game. Jed Spence has been promoted in this in this league before with Nottingham Forest. And in that season, he was probably the best right back in the league. This guy at this level is elite. This is A tier. In terms of attraction, in terms of real, realism, you don't get much better than this. I'll be brutally honest with you. This is a good one. I'm doing it now before it, before he's even signed. Hopefully he does. Hopefully it doesn't get hijacked. But let's just get straight into it because this one is is this one's exciting. Here it is, guys. Here's the scout report. I, I like this one. This one is good. This one is this one's good. This one gives a smile on my face. Anyway, get Spence. England under 21 international, just won the tournament with those guys. Went to Leeds United, let's just get straight into it. We know who he is, 23 years old. Played for Tottenham, can play right back, right wing back. Predominantly white right back, gets up and down really quick. Um, valued at around 10 million, you know, six caps in the 21s in England. Injury record, did have a quite a serious knee injury last year. He missed a lot of football over 34 days. Um, but can I go over that? Nothing major in his injury record, fairly solid, so nothing to really worry about. Here is his, his credentials, his, his playing stats, 102 games he's played in the Championship. And let's not forget the year he was at Nottingham Forest when he got them promoted and he was absolutely outstanding that entire season. Probably the best right back in the league. So this is the calibre, this is the calibre we're aiming at now. And this is what I like to see, especially with the other links. Some of them are a bit more unknown, but kind of bit that gem kind of mark that Daniel Farker likes to see. Some of them are just levels above. And, and for me, Jed Spence at this level is is a joke of a player. And he's proven that in all his appearances in the Championship, especially in that Nottingham Forest season where he was phenomenal. Eight hey, FA Cup, played in League One last year with, of course, Joe Rudder. It's a little bit of communication there, both from Spurs as well. That will definitely help, for sure. 100% players speak to each other. Um. Again, with the injury, didn't play that much. But when he did play, he was fairly decent last season. Right back for um, in France as well. So, very good thing, yeah. Obviously, played in the Premier League four times. So, Spurs hasn't quite worked out in that move. But getting a player who's done it at this level not too long ago at all is 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 a big statement for this league. And that there's, his, um, there's his main stats. Look, as you can see, 102 appearances in the Championship at 23 years old. Made that step to the Premier League probably a little bit too early. It didn't quite work for him, but to get this guy is is ridiculous. I'll be honest with you. This this one excites me, and I'm sure it excites a lot of fans as well. And that's the season in question with Nottingham Forest, where 42 times, two goals, five assists. This guy, this guy is is at this level elite. Let's just get back to the report. Let's let's see what he's about. Of course, we'll start with the technical attributes. We'll get on to a few other things that people are speaking about that I don't personally believe. Um, fullback, obviously for a fullback, first touch, 8 out of 10. Solid first touch, solid ball control. I remember, caveat, these are at the championship level. These are level where at. This is what these stats represent. Not the entire world of football, the championship level. Short passing is okay. Um, in terms of, you know, decent, you know, you know his, his medium passing from last year was actually more effective. Um, where he missed out the short man and kind of went a bit longer on the floor. That was his best passing attributes from last season. Long balls, not really too much of them. Short balls are okay. But again, it's those medium passes that really excel for um, for Jed Spence, which will, you know, might be incorporated into the system. Uh, recovery, very quick player, and that is a huge part of his game. So recovery from when he gets forward, going back, it's huge. And I mean... One of his best attributes is the way in which he uses his pace to not only get forward, but get back and be a constant threat up and down. If we're counted on and he gets beat, like we saw that Luke Ayling or, or both fullbacks do, you know, when we go forward, he will be able to recover a lot quicker, allowing the centre-backs to focus on the middle. Progressive ball carries is, and I'm going to say this, elite for a right-back in terms of anyone. The way in which he allows himself in any system to get forward is probably his best attribute marked with the recovery and how he gets back. So that doesn't make him an attacking fullback. It makes him both. He can do either side of it. This guy's stats from last season in terms of progressive ball carries was ridiculous. And here on FB Ref, as you can see, is an example of that. 
Look at the amount of carries. Look at the total distance of the carries, the progressive carries. Carries into the final third, counters into the penalty area. Take on attempted, successful take ons. You know, this is player. Look at the percentiles. Best in Europe in terms of how many minutes he played in, in, in the top leagues. In terms of progressive carries and dribbling and going forward. He's elite at that. A lot of other parts of his game need to improve, of course, otherwise he's going to be in the championship. But in that aspect, outstanding. He will destroy teams like he did previously at this level. And then the other stuff, you've got technical ability is fine. Progressive pass is fine. Progressive comes from him driving. So the progressive passes isn't needed as much because he's already in the positions. He's already in those progressive positions. One you one defending is okay. He can be a little bit reckless in terms of fouls and diving in a little bit. Um, look, he's a quick player. He's very strong, very quick. So, so sometimes that's normal. And defensive positional play. I put seven for those stats because they're not bad. They're not. They're not. They're not great. They're just okay and fine. You know, he won't get beat that much because he can recover it. So, you know, you're going to have to take him on well and truly if you want to get past him. But he might beat that initial tackle, but then he'll recover really well. Good player in that sense. A B for technical ability. Very solid. 76 out of 100. Great score. These guys, these ones are the focus right here. These ones right here. My apologies. I almost forgot heat maps. Uh, from the last three seasons, 2022-23, as you can see, a constant. And this was obviously last year for, for uh, in France. Um, this was the championship season where it was phenomenal. And look, look at the balance of attack and defence. And that's what stands... This is a smaller sample size because he didn't play that much. And this is the year before when he was a bit more of an attacker. As you can see, but this is the season we need to focus on. And this is the player we want to get. This one right here. Look at the balance. I'm talking about balance earlier in, in a previous video. Look at the balance in which he fought, gets forward and back. It's not someone that's going to overcommit forward and not get back. The recovery and speed of him allows him to get back in his defensive positions. So focusing on this, this is what we'll expect. This is why this signing is elite at this level for us, for Legion United and what we need right now. Brilliant. This is what we need. This is a pivotal part of the system. Physical. Let's get into his physical attributes. As you can see, just look at them. Just look at them. What do I need to say much more? Hmm? Using his body to maintain the ball. Brilliant. Acceleration, absolutely rapid. Physicality, brilliant. Agility, outstanding. Movement on and off the ball, excellent. Fitness, decent. A mighty score of 53 out of 60, which is a solid A. This is probably one of the best in terms of what we need as an athlete as well. Going up and down with them, recovery speed. You need these physical attributes. And he's allowed that because of the physical attributes, which are... Phenomenal in Jed Spence. That has never been an issue for him in his career. His physical attributes are a big, big, big part of the reason he's where he is right now. Psychological. Yeah. And again, look. And then this one I want to talk about because there's been the, the, the them words that get pelted around too much in, with footballers and that's attitude. And, and, and for me, every footballer has attitudes. Every single one of them. They are at the elite sporting level you don't get to where you are with any sort of attitude jed spence for me is a competitive guy who wants to play football at the best level he can and i have i have no issue with that and we shouldn't because similar with a lot of players in this side he believes in himself and he believes in his ability and so he should because he's very good at it now certain managers won't like that and that's just a fact certain managers don't like people that have that kind of ego or show that kind of ego or express to them they want to play they think they should be playing and you, we just like it to people like Pablo Hernandez, who, when he didn't play, was not a happy bunny, or when he came off, often would react on the bench. This is fine. As long as it becomes where the player is not a, a hindrance to the team, that's fine. I know players where I'm at that didn't work out in other teams, so they got sent to our team because of their attitude problem. And we had zero issues with them because the coaches we have and the coaches we had then we could deal with people. Everyone's different. I love Jed Spencer's attitude. It reminds me of a lot of footballers. Some we have in this team. We'll talk about Joel Perot. He will, he'll want to play every game. You think if he's not playing, he'll be happy. No, he'll be telling the coach, coach, I want to play every game. I think Daniel Farke is smart enough to deal with these type of people and actually use that as motivation for them to get into the side. I just want to quill that one. I don't believe that's true. Every footballer can have a strop. Every footballer can get in moods. Every footballer can have arguments. It's how you get over that. And the fact that he's had few successful seasons in the championship, including under Steve Cooper, who for me, I believe is a good man manager. 
in which he was phenomenal, makes me believe that under Daniel Farker, we will get the best of this guy. So I just want to calm that one. But yeah, there, there we are. They're the psychological attributes. Persistence, I like his persistence. That's what I just spoke about, the way he continues to go. But leadership, not a clear leader, but probably one who can have a little chat on the pitch. Not a clear leader, young lad still, but has experienced this level, which is important. Calmness, yeah, he's a calm guy. Nothing phases him. He knows the game. He knows what he's got to do. Reading the game tactically, again, we'll see this more, but the fact he adapted to to uh, René uh, or Rennes in France really quickly would suggest he knows what he's doing. Thinking speed, again, similar to what I just said, and concentration, 7 out of 10. One or two times can get caught with some short passes. I have seen that for England under 21s. A little bit of times gets caught in some curious positions at times. You know, that little bit of an understanding sometimes. Oh, I shouldn't be here. Um, but yeah, this guy's a top talent. 53 out of 70. There's an the overall thing of Jed's bench. So I'll let you guys read that. Pause it right now if you want to read that. That's fine. But yeah, here we are in the final part now. Uh, the key strengths and improvements. And like I've already said, Ball progression, huge. As a fullback in Daniel Farker's system, da, 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 ball progression is important. And the recovery speed is just as important. The more progression, the more recovery. Despence has both of them. And he's okay. Oh, well, not okay. He's decent at passing as well. Got a really good pack accuracy. Especially medium passes. Short passes is also fine. Experience at this level. He's won, well, he's not won this league. He won promotion from in this league. He knows exactly what it's got to do to succeed in this league. In a possession-based system, he will love it. He will have all the joy. The space Aileen gets on that right side at times is, is frightening. Jed Spence in that will be frightening because also, crossing. This guy can cross a ball hard and low. Perot will love it. Non took the back post will love it. This guy is a brilliant cross. Improvements, consistent game time. Look, it's not a consistent game time in a few years. Wilds going to Tottenham. Didn't get in. Couldn't make the cut there for whatever reason. I don't care. Don't bother me at all. Again, and then that is, of course, something you're wondering. And you now get back into that. But apart from that, there's nothing for me. Potentially understanding tactically a little bit how to do certain things and improving concentration is one you could arguably look at. But the man that's down to the manager to get that into the player. Similar players, I like him to Walker Peters. I'm not identical profiles by any means, but both attacking fullbacks who have decent recovery, who can get forward and create chances from going forward, of course. And there it is. Technical is a B. Physical is a solid A. And psychological, a solid B. Overall, a B plus. This guy is huge for Leeds United. This is a top, top signing. Even if it's just for the year. It is or it's longer. It's a top player to have and he will get us to where we need to be. He's a, well, he will be a big part of getting us where we need to be. Yeah. Brilliant signing, Jed Spence. Outstanding. Let me know what you guys think about this one. I imagine most of you guys are very happy with this one. And like I said, the little concerns people have, not for me. I've not heard or seen anything really that makes me go, meh. You know, not for me. He turns up to training, he trains, he works hard. He questions the, what's happening sometimes, fine by me. Some manager can do all that, some can't. Daniel Farker for me can. I think he's open and you can speak to him. It will work well for me. Farker wouldn't have signed off on this either if he didn't. So yeah, outstanding signing. This is looking good. Leads. It's looking pretty good. Um, we'll solve a big problem we had. Let me know what you guys think. I appreciate all the support.